Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and anybody else who's listening, watching us today. Happy New Year. Uh, great start to 2024. And happy birthday today to Mrs. Jones, which is why she's wearing her very fetching top hat. Birthday top hat. I'm going hat to take it off now because it's causing me an injury. Look at <laughs> yes. it. Yes. All right. It'll stop the flow of blood to her brain. So, um, yes. So, yes. That doesn't take much at my age. Right. There you go. Coming to you, I've just checked out the window, coming to you from an absolutely soaking wet South North Hants. And what's the weather like in Cambridge? Sopping. Yeah. It is yeah. very wet. And um, the River Cam looks like it's going to burst its banks. We're on flood watch around here. So, uh, yes. yeah, it's all a bit. Oh, it has. Hey, look, it has done me a mischief. Oh, it look has. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, we... Well, don't wear a too high top hat. <laughs> no. No, it will give you a headache. We, uh, we in in our cottage, we're quite low lying, and worse still, we have a septic tank. It'll need, yeah, it'll need emptying Ooh. in a couple of days if this carries on. It's not nice. It's not a day. We don't need Ooh, to dear. discuss that. No. Anyway, anyway, on to better things. And a weekend, a weekend of rugby. And where are we in the leagues, Mrs. Jones? <laughs> <laughs> Top of the league. Top of the league. Woo! Top of the league. Yes. There yeah. we go. Start okay. 2024, the way we mean to go on. Yeah. Yes. So we've got the Delia moment out the way there. The <laughs> the maiden aunts on the sherry trifle out the way bit. So, yeah. Brilliant. Uh, yeah. Top of the leagues and, and just loving life, I think. But starting with the most important team, Toaster Under Nines. Yes, we'll, we'll just deal with it. They had they had a little ad hoc uh, skills session on Sunday on the AstroTurf her toaster and a special request that they got a mention. So their siblings were able to go along as well, little ones and big ones, and a good time oh. was had by all. They didn't do any tackling, but they did a lot of skills, passing and throwing and just having fun, which I think is what many rugby should be all about. So... Well done, Toaster Brilliant. Under Nines. Well done, Toaster. Yeah. Toaster Rugby Club showing everybody the way again. Well done. Indeed. Top work. So good. And everybody so, had a good time. Everybody had a good time, Excellent. apparently. Well, certainly my two did. So. Brilliant. Well, that's that's what counts. Good start to 2024. Yeah. Talking yeah. of, well, this is the end of 2023 we need to start yes. with. Yeah. Last game of the season at the Gardens. A full house. Ooh, on telly. Ooh, ooh. And I'm going to say it. Say it. Go on, say it. What? What a a comeback. Comeback. Yes. Yeah. I'm not having any of this nonsense about you can't say it. We were down fourteen nil. We were just after the start of the first second half. We were down seven seventeen, but we weren't down and out. We paid some absolutely stonking rugby to be a pretty tough, full yeah. on, full bore, bar one mi minor Manu Tuilangi. Yeah, yeah. I, I was just, I was, <sighs> I mean, I was bored, witless in the first half. I have to say, it's a long time since I've I've seen a first half quite so tedious. Which I, but I think that is when we come up against a team that plays a negative style of rugby, we get sucked in. It sucks our positive energy out. It happened at Tigers. It happened at Sale when we played them at Sale. Strangely, it Sarries tried to make it happen, but we didn't let it happen. We took the game to them much more. So it was just we did get sucked into that, and then once we started playing our game and playing it patiently what struck me was what we wouldn't have done last season is have the patience and the confidence to just keep going and we will get there and it was that patience of this young side just was yeah. so impressive so impressive so I wasn't bored in the first half oh I was taking photographs of men smashing each other <laughs> 
and 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 so there's one in particular which I noticed um, Angus Scott Young quite liked, where he is basically mangling a Dupria. Oh, that's fair enough. No, I mean, no, nobody can argue that that is not a great way to spend a Saturday afternoon. To be honest, mm. yeah. And and I think the lads actually took the energy out of sale. It's a very risky way of playing the game, fair. Uh, but it actually told in the end because yeah, uh, yeah, we swapped a few out, and we, you know you're swapping out. <laughs> You could Corny see the, and you and could see the sale, the sale players going, oh, joy, oh, deep joy, absolutely knackered. And Courtney <laughs> Laws is just coming on. Yeah, yeah. just yeah, making just his probably. presence felt. And, and, Kurt, and Curtis just brought, the, just took the energy levels up. So powered by pikelets. Yeah. Powered so that's... by pikelet, pikelet power. <laughs> and will everyone will be pleased to see to hear that new, more of that shortly but it has been a fresh delivery so yes, i i yeah, actually yeah. i really enjoyed the first half in a bizarre way i didn't enjoy the kicking very much no it's it is the, part yeah. of the sport at the minute um but i did enjoy watching the physicality it was it was, it was very fun. physical very it was yeah. incredibly fit and it would have taken it out of both teams but this it seems this pre-season of bulking up i mean one of the worst offenders for smashing people Yes, Finn Smith. I'm looking at you. Yes, uh, he was smashing everybody. So, yes, I and, still and course, can't. No. I still haven't got quite. Can't quite decide whether Finn is exceptionally brave or not, or just a bit daft. I just think he likes smashing into people. I think he, just, I think just he likes it. To, I think he's a bit like of energy well, there. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to go and smash somebody. Oh, um, I'll just, I'll just so, run yeah, at I them. Think, I'll just run at them, yes. And that was what happened in the second half. Second half, we just upped the pace and they couldn't live with it. And then when we brought fresh legs on and we upped it even more, they couldn't yeah. live with it anymore. Yeah. Um, just stunning. And they, and I think the sign of the fitness and certainly the mental fitness came from George Furbank because mm. he was on the money to take that tap penalty. Yes, yeah, and, yeah. And he won us the game. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely yeah. brilliant. Um, and he's loving being captain, as he says Isn't himself. He? He's absolutely, he? it's, it's helped him lift his game even more. I mean, he was playing well beforehand, but nine from nine now as captain, just it's utterly amazing. stunning. Amazing. It's stunning. And, and uh, Mitch, Mitch going the full 80 again without, <laughs> without losing the feeling in his legs was pretty yeah, good. And was quite perky in the changing room afterwards. So, yeah. you know, maybe he's getting used to it. Um, no, I think he was, yeah, again, they just don't, you, the thing is with Mitch, you don't know where he's going to go or no. what he's going to do. The uncertainty around him. Uh, is he going to go found, that way? Is he going to go that he way? Found that, is he going to snip gap, underneath you? That gap was beautiful for his try as well. It was just, oh, there's a Aim gap. for the hat. Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought George, I thought Ferbs was running away from the hat, actually. <laughs> Why is mind you straight at James Fitchu, who had got oh. the most amazing sequence of George like an exocet coming straight yeah. at him. And he didn't even aim at the TV camera. He's aiming straight at James, who got an absolutely fab so congratulations, James. Well done, my friend. Uh absolutely stonking set of photos of George going straight at him. Um and you've got to get him. Everyone goes, Oh, well, it's easy when they come in. No, you still gotta get yeah. him. You know, yeah. just because the fish is there doesn't necessarily mean you're going to catch it. So uh, top work for Mr. Fitchu there. Um, and, uh, yeah, but seriously, he wasn't aiming at the hat. Um, yep. and that, I, I don't think know you need to have words. <laughs> well, fortunately, Mitch saved the day. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think I think that was uh, – we've got some congratulations as well. We have. Uh, of course, uh, Centurion Alex Coles. It only seems like five minutes. It's, it's, and he's making his debut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're all so young still. Yes, that's, yeah. that's a ridiculous. Only twenty-four. Yeah. Hundred caps is an awesome achievement, um, and uh, still owns the record for the slowest try ever scored at the Gardens uh, against Timishwara Saracens. <laughs> <laughs> People were, you know, having a rest, <laughs> but it had to be scored. Yeah, yes, and I was so pleased for Berger Odendahl. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we t everyone talks about you know Tom Pearson 
and Finn and Tarek and the, the guy and Chunya from London Irish and Worcester. You know, Berger lost his job at Wasps. He had he went to Japan. He came back to us. He's had a a torrid time with injury, uh, and he's been desperate to play. Um, the S and C guys, I think Kira Ruddy was looking after him. I know she had everything crossed that it went well for him. Um, and I was so chuffed because he grew into the game. He did. He, he just he, did. he was he was desperate to do well. And I think the thing that sealed where he came back, I thought, yeah, I remember I had to do this was the charge down. Yes. Uh, charge yeah. down kick. Yeah. Because uh, that lifted everybody in the ground and it lifted him. And he was, you know, he was steaming around yeah. in the way that we need him to steam around. Um, you could see so, there was yeah, some sort of... Congratulations, Berger. Yeah, you could see there was sort of some first first night, first day at school nerves to start with. But as you say, he grew into it. And by the end of it, he it was, you know, never, never not been one of us, had he? You know, it was just... That's yeah. really he was, lovely to he's see. A that. Yeah, he's Brilliant. a saintsman. Nice. And he's number lovely 2088. Chap. Really lovely chap, and his wife's lovely as well. And, he, you know, the players were all delighted for him in the changing room. Yeah, yeah lots of hugs and team photos, and it was lovely um, because he has worked so hard to get back. Yeah. And I think it's nine months since he played his last game at wow. Wasps. Um, wow. I don't know whether he, would, I think he may even have been in that very last game. Oh yes, he may have played Gosh. in the game that we played. Yes, and that, he may have played that, and and you know that's heartbreaking. That you know, um, and it, it, I always feel a bit. He is uh, of those who come from other clubs that folded. He's the forgotten man, and I'm really mm. chuffed for him that uh, he's done so well. No, it, so, it, it certainly well done, offered Berger. offered something um, at centre that that I was going to say we haven't really had. We, we were seeing it in Tommy Freeman when he's at the centre, but since since James Downey went, that solid punching holes up the middle. Uh, Luther, of course. Don't forget Luther. Oh, Luther. How could Our I forget old... Luther? Oh, but Luther could play. I don't know. How could you forget Luther? He was he was exactly that that Bosch merchant with a he was a with Bosch a very merchant. soft pair of hand. Yes, and that was the the difference. With a very he... soft pair of hands, yeah. so he could create the space uh, yeah. through the middle. Yeah. Whereas I so, think James, well done, James Downey was just like, <laughs> well, he just smashed into things, and then <laughs> they say, "You know what's coming? <laughs> you know what's coming? We can't do anything about it." <laughs> yes, steaming through the middle, Mister Jerry yes. Downey. He ended up a yeah. loss for a bit, didn't he? Did he? Mm, and he went. To, I think he went to Munster as well. So I still went, he, went from back James. To, went it's a lovely chat. Last time we saw back, him, he went back home. Yeah. Last time yeah. we saw him was actually in Treviso. Oh wow! He was, uh, was he working he was for over... some TV company or something. No, he was there for somebody's stag night. <laughs> of course one he of was. The, one of the Treviso players. It was his stag night, which was highly entertaining because we were there for a joint stag and hen weekend, if you recall. And yes, it, indeed. This, the, Bar the, the, the Barclay Hen Weekend, I believe. The Barclay, yeah, that's right. And um, so this he, this Irish lad who plays Treviso for Treviso, who was either one of James's clients or and and or a friend, it was his stag night. But what was the funniest thing was they were back at the hotel before we were, and I thought, well, this is young people. That's you know, no staying power. No staying power at all. No. No, and we no. had drunk Teresa Rugby Club dry of Prosecco. I, I do recall that because there was an emergency um they had, they had to send to the to the hospitality. To the hospitality tent to see if they could get, get any more. Yeah. And then they got all the Prosecco and then we'd run out of vouchers and they'd still got Prosecco, so they just gave it to us. Yeah. That's... Yeah. No, I do remember that. And I hadn't drunk a drop because I was working. So there you, you go. Well, I had drunk. That was a very wet game as well. And then we, as we talked last, it was. Time, oh, it was. Yes, Sorry. <laughs> it, was, it was a very wet weekend. Yes, it, we ended it. We won it with the last kick of the game. We Biggs. did with Dan. Yeah, we yeah. nicked it. Much they to the annoyance happy. of the locals. And then we, and then we had the fun bus ride home, as we talked about last that week. Was, yes, when I was snuggled up, uh, not out of choice, the, uh, to, in the in the wing, in, in, in the, the armpits, armpits of. of her, <laughs> Hunting to the rugby club. <laughs> yeah, and happy a lot days. of frightened locals thinking, "What the hell's going on?" Well, yeah, what yes, on those earth? were days. Those were the days. Yes. 
Uh, anyway. A full house of the gardens. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Just we about. haven't mentioned the conditions, have we? No. Yeah. <laughs> they were, they so were not we good. Rained. They were not good. Um, it, it rained in the first half, but not for very long. But the wind yeah. was significant. It played a huge part in what happened in the game. Uh, Sale had it in the first half. We had it in the second. And it was sig- significant. Um, it was because, windy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you saw when Gus, what's his face? The bar, No, what's his name? Gus Wall. Um, oh, Wall. Yeah, he was a nuisance. On in the, yeah, in the, he is a nuisance. I like Gus. I think he's uh, he's he's one of the old style oh, nuisance um, scrum, scrum halves. halves. I like yeah, him. yeah. He's a nuisance scrum half. Local lad, done good. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm really chuffed that he's he's doing well. Um, but because uh, he is a pain in the posterior, and that's what you oh, want from a scrum half, really. I've got oh, to be. oh, hello, we're getting a visitor. Oh, we're hello. Getting... Oh. Oh. oh, wow. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy oh, birthday to oh, you. Oh, Happy oh, birthday, yeah. Mrs. Jones. Happy birthday to you, because I know who those are from. Oh, do you? All oh, right. All yeah. oh, right. Okay. Shall I have a look? You have a look. This gift has been hand created. Oh, well, well, not by. You'd be pleased to hear I've got. <laughs> right. Oh, I don't know how to get in. Uh, oh, here's the card. I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the um, at the feeding regime, not the card. Oh, ah, oh, ladies, what you top? You are utterly top, ladies, what? That timing Thank could you. not have been better, oh, could beautiful. it? Yes, yes. So it's my sixtieth birthday, a significant birthday, and my dear friends, you are very kind. Okay. I'm going to put them on the windowsill. They're not going to get much sun. <laughs> no, they're not going to get not going to get fried there in the go. sunlight, are they? Oh, that's lovely. Yes, perfect Excellent. timing there. Perfect timing. Excellent. Yes, well done. So, where had we got to? Excellent. Right. Conditions. Uh, we, were talking, we were singing the praises Costume. of the opposition's scrum half, scrum half and, the, yeah. and the conditions. So the conditions were awful, wind wise, but it meant in the second half we yeah. had the wind, and you could see it because Finn was fizzing the ball. Into touch yeah. a long much further than he was in the uh, first half, and it would have been quite tiring. It's Although I have tiring. to say, George Ford's drop goal, George Ford's drop think, goal was a thing of beauty. It was, it was. <laughs> but but, but you're was. right about um, running. I think the conditions played a part. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I think that you say I remember when I was playing hockey back in the day that once we were playing. With the wind behind us in the first half, if that's great, and then when you're tired and you turn round and you feel like it's running in treacle, I mean, obviously I wasn't fit; I was fitter than I am now. But, but even so, it does. It's surprising how it takes yeah. it out of you, the force of the wind against you. So, yeah, but uh, just and that physicality in the first half, and then the um, second, and then yeah, the wind. It, I think yeah. it would have taken its toll. Yeah, it would have yeah. taken its toll. But yes. um, so yeah, so we had a full house at the gardens. Well done to yeah. everybody, uh, the commercial team, and well done to everybody who came because it. And uh, well done to the sales supporters. There were quite a few. There were, were quite, quite a few vocal. There. Well yeah. done, every because it was great to see them. I love it when there's a, a mixed crowd of home and away yeah. support. It does make a huge difference. Um, mm. And yeah, no, so well done, and um, yeah. Well, yes, it's just brought, great. And they, when was the last brought, time we had a full house at the gardens? In a while. Quite a while. But no, the sales supporters, shout out to them, they came down on their fun bus. I think there were 44 of them, something on, on their fun bus. And apparently they had a great time, notwithstanding the results, and still felt a lot of positivity going home. So great, you know, can't. And they're, yeah, that's they're enjoying their, they're enjoying their right, moments in the sun. So. Yeah. Yeah, and it's great to see a north northern club, north England well. club doing so well um, because yeah. we need rugby in the north. Um, so yeah, fair dues. We've got to pick our player of the match. Well, this is hard. It is hard because uh, you could see why Ferbs was picked, and and he's the the obvious pick. But we want to pick the not obvious pick, and I, I'm I'm. 
I'm I'm torn between uh, well, obviously Curtis because and and he just took the energy levels up that bit, but I do think um, Finn Smith for me actually. The more I think about it, controlling the game. Just yeah, kicking, no, I can see that. that kick, I can... You know, the just I, I just think he was every. I mean, he's so ridiculously young, and um, he's he just the conditions were awful, and he played the the patience that he has that you know, which is actually Dan used to try and push it in those in those circumstances. Mm. Biggs, bless him, would have pushed it and tried too hard and unsettled everything. Whereas Finn is confident in all all his mates around him and that he is part of playing the patient's game, going through the processes, trusting what they've done in training. And I think we need, I think for me, it is, it's, I've given it a lot of thought. I've watched the game back as well. Well, the second half. And, um, and I, yeah, for me, it was Finn. Yeah. So I, I yeah, it, 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 for me it would have been between Mitch or Finn. Yeah, Mitch, and it's Mitch for the was, same Mitch reason. was the other one. Yeah, yeah. But I think yeah. you know, uh, it's for the same reason. The two of them oh. patiently controlled that game. Yeah, and uh, you know, for all Marcus Smith's fireworks at uh, HQ, I it, he I, I want you know Finn had to control the game against an extremely powerful. Yeah, you know, arm wrestler of a side who Just... wants to close everything down. And, yeah, you know, he uh. he was marshalling stuff beautifully. I mean, he, you know, it was great to see Hutch fizzing about the place as well. But Hutch was having yes. a good time. Yes, um, <laughs> but so between for me, it would have been between Mitch and yes, Finn. But for the me. two of them are getting an understanding now. It reminds me of the old Dixon Dixon Myler Myler. understanding. Yeah. I- Yes, exactly what I said at the weekend. Um, it's that they know they know how each other breathes. They're just, yeah, yeah, it's fantastic, yeah. fantastic to see. Um, so yeah, well, so Finn Smith, I think, is a great choice. Finn Smith. I think we go yeah. with Finn. Congratulations, Finn. The ladies, what? Yeah. Uh, Pod have chosen Finn Smith as their player of the match. Top Which of course means he'll be on the bench um, next week because that's the way it seems to work. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be rested next week. I'm sure Daz. I'm sure Daz just looks at this and goes, "Oh, what do they know? Stick him on there." <laughs> Actually, a word for Daz. Uh, yeah. I think Daz. He, you know, he's work. He's working brilliantly with his coaches. They identified at the start in pre-season this idea that they needed more aggression. They all bulked up. Yeah. They all realised they had to earn the right in defence to go and attack. We know they can attack. Yeah. And um, he and his coaching team uh, deserve huge plaudits for identifying an issue and being so open about identifying it. It wasn't, you know, they yeah. haven't yeah. hidden it. The players have talked about it openly and now it's paying dividends. Yeah, you absolutely. know, when you've got teams like Sale, um, yeah. I mean, the big test is this weekend, but we'll talk about. It. Well, everyone's a big test now. It's, Everyone, it's we're in that it's sort of game so again. Close. It's so tight. But yeah. Yeah. So, congratulations, Das. Uh, you're doing a cracking job. Keep going, uh, my friend. Uh, and and the same to the rest of the coaches. Yeah. Utterly, utterly brilliant <clears throat> to be top of the tree at the end of 2023. And I was hearing something that we'd scored more points or. One more games or than any other team in the Premiership during 2023. We were the team oh. of 2023. Oh, wow. Not that you'd know it in the media, but sure, no. more of that shortly. Um, photography corner. Can I talk you hog can. stuff? I'm just gonna get another coffee. I'd like to say thank you to the Saints media team. They bought us all chocolates. Oh, how to say lovely. thank you. And they're lovely chocolates. I must admit, I've enjoyed eating them. Um, uh, to say thank you for the work that we all do, and that you know, it is a privilege to work with such a talented team of togs because they are we're all different and we all see things in a different way, which is quite fun because yeah. you go, Oh, yeah, you know. So, James Fitch, who is your portrait man, yes. Adam is your stadium wide angle shot man, and and is getting more and more into the action stuff. And uh, I do my action stuff, which I which I love. Um, so, so thank you, it's nice it's, to be appreciated. Mm. And it's great to work as part of a great team. Um, I'm going to talk camera gear 
uh, for a minute because it is the season when all the photography pods name their, you know, kit of the year, lens, whatever. Right. My Nikon Z8 is probably the best camera I have ever, ever worked with. Um, it's not necessarily the best featured camera because that's the Z9, but in terms of a light camera that you can carry with you and do stuff quickly, the Z8 is just brilliant. And yesterday when I was at Bedford, more of that shortly, uh, I realised it is a very light piece of kit, yet it's a very, very clever piece of kit. And it makes you look good even when you're being a pillock because it remembers <laughs> what you actually want to do rather than what you... <laughs> it's, it's, sometimes the technology rather does help. So, yeah, uh, anybody thinking of buying a high-end professional camera, I thoroughly recommend the Z8 because it is a fabulous bit of kit. Um Changing room. So some people have mentioned to me, you've been, I've been in the changing room a lot. Well, it's, it is actually, I haven't just inveigled my way in, you know, snuck in the back door. Um, it was actually at the request of the media team. They asked if um, it'd be okay if I went in because they want a mixture of stills and film and the, of a certain yeah. song. Mm. Um, because you can't, uh, while you're filming, you don't necessarily get the same sort of thing. Now, I have set myself the challenge because I wasn't entirely happy with what I got on Saturday. I was very happy with what I got at Gloucester, partly helped by George doing his, you know, full opera woo, yes. with his boots. Uh, I wasn't entirely convinced what I, got, what I got on Saturday, so I think I need to go and stand at the other end of the uh, barrier a bit and go and stand at the other end of the changing room. Yeah. Um, yeah. What I would say is everybody gets involved in the song. It yeah. takes something exceptional, like a drugs test, um, for somebody not to be involved. So I had a few questions about why wasn't Fred, Boris, or Eric there? They were all there. They were all there. Everybody was there. They were all there. But yeah. I mean, even uh, the coaches the... do it. I do love the fact that <laughs> didn't, didn't the, the what, drugs sorry. didn't the drugs test man wait until they'd done the song the other week? No, he he um, unfortunately can't. They have they have oh, a set of regime good. they have to do. So Tommy Lockett, Tommy Lockett, uh, Robbie Smith had done his, and Tommy Lockett had oh, to go for his, and they can't that's... wait. They have to do it within oh, a certain that's... time. Yeah. So Tom unfortunately missed the one in Glasgow. Uh, no, what he did was he realised I was taking photographs, so he said, "Well, you stand there because he's supposed to keep an eye on what's going on in oh, the changing room." Yeah, yeah. So he moved out of my way so I could oh, get the listen. photos, which I thought listen. was you know very kind of him. Yes, um, but you say he was loving it, absolutely loving it. I've now noticed. Go on, yeah. I've now noticed teams always sing a song, and I've known that for many years. But I'm starting to notice there's some pretty terrible ones out there. Oh, 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 my lord! Yes, <laughs> yeah. There's some shockers. There's some absolute shockers. Uh, uh, Coventry, seriously, Matt boys. Oh. What do they sing then? Yeah, they. I had. I had to listen to theirs, and I think no, it's no shoe army. It's no true <laughs> army. Um, so, yeah, the song is now in a really important part. Yeah, all the coaches get involved, all the SNC yeah. guys get involved, everybody gets involved. I mean, the first, as Douse is finishing off his speech, he's he's taking his shoe off, ready for the song. Um, Fantastic. And it's usually a debutant and somebody celebrating, as Alex Coles was, a number of caps, or it's a nominee on the part of the captain, or it's the captain. It, there are, you know, as I've said, this this team have a number of rituals that get more and more complicated as uh, things go on. But it works, and they are very together. They're a very tight unit, and I love the fact that you know Will Glister. If you look carefully in the photos, Will Glister has managed to station himself at the highest point in the changing room, so he's actually looking down on everybody <laughs> across the scene. I'm sure so, I you know, saw all a, the academy lads are there. I'm sure I saw a bit drop off a locker in this in this week's film. Oh, they're, they're, I feel sorry for Christy Coates and her team. I mean, they're going to, you know, guy the odd job man is going to be in there with his screwdriver mending those every week now. But if it keeps the team together and they're winning, I imagine Christy will forego the odd locker door. Um, Can I just say that Christy threatened to lock me in the toilets on Saturday? I tell you for why, because at the beginning of the second half. I decided I, I was I needed to go to the loo. I'd had a hot toddy and a mulled wine beforehand, so I needed to go to the loo. I'll wait till the beginning of the second half when you can be in and out quite quickly. And I and Christy was in the, the tunnel. I said, This is this is plan P that quite often if I go to the loo, something will happen. And it did. So as I came back, she said, You can't come back. She said, I've got to go and lock you in the loo. I thought that was harsh. 
Oh, that was very harsh, but she did let me back. People, my, operations my, my manager rug- decrees that. So. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, my um, my rugby family around me were not so happy. You stay out there. No, I've got to go in. So, yeah, I just triggered things <laughs> off, obviously. Yeah, they knew. They knew. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. They knew. Anyway, so the changing room stuff will, um, obviously, I'm not ever going to do anything if we were to lose. That would be inappropriate. You really don't yeah. have camera stuff in your face um, when, when, when a team loses. But it's great fun. And um, I am thoroughly enjoying being in the changing room. I've had to change how I use my lenses because if you go from very cold, wet outside <laughs> to a very warm dry inside you actually fog up so i've had steam to up. not put one of my lenses on my camera and have it in my, steam up yeah so you have a steaming up problem so i've had to have it in my pocket warmed up ready to go so that when you get to the end of the game so some of you may have seen i'm faffing around with lenses which i wouldn't normally do just to stop the steaming up problem so yeah, yeah. it's fun anyway Every, everything's so yesterday... a learning opportunity oh yes yesterday yeah oh, it is. No. i've learned loads this season i learned loads every season um, yesterday, Coventry uh, were at Goldington Road to play the Blues. Congratulations to everybody in the Championship. In yeah. the same way, the Premiership has had a bumper Christmas. Uh, I think, as we said last week, you know, up yours, the RFU and Bill Sweeney. Yeah, yeah a fabulous crowd, sell out of 5,000. Don't go telling us people are interested in Championship rugby. Yeah. I-, I have to say, congratulations. Thank you to all the Blues um, supporters who were at the Saints game. There were a lot of blue supporters came to say hello. Uh, it was lovely to see you. They're all in their blues, um, you know, scarves and hats and all the rest of it cheering on the Saints. And likewise, it was great to see uh, a, a bumper crowd yesterday at Goldington Road. Uh, lots of Coventry supporters. So people are travelling in the Championship mm. uh, and uh, lots of Saints supporters who wanted a second fix of rugby. Um, Sadly, uh, well, not for Coventry. Coventry played well. They have a very bit like Sale, actually. Aggressive, punchy, you know, niggly. Um, Chudders, your favourite man, uh, was at scrum half, uh, Liz. He had a good game. Good. Uh, good. He and Alex Day were needling each other. Oh, I imagine. imagine. Him and Alex Day were needling each other. Yeah. Um, There were were lots of questions about, (laughs) I've never heard this. Now, this is a new one, an aside. So lots of questions before the game. Where's Henry Pollock? Where's yes. Henry Pollock? And the answer, Sam Roberts, the PA at um, Goldington Road, great, the great Sam uh, Roberts, who often does TV commentaries, um, he announced to the crowd why Henry wasn't playing. Now, I have never heard that. No. That a, yeah. no reason and why the- we... Oh, a player isn't on the team sheet. And the answer was that uh, England under 20s go into camp on Wednesday, tomorrow. Uh. So they would have had to manage his minutes. And it got so complicated. They thought, you know what, we'll give the lad a rest. Um, yeah. And I think uh, just I think the Blues missed his energy, a bit like Curtis and Saints. Uh, Henry yeah. has got a massive energy. Um, I think. Archie McParlan may have also been caught up in all of that, so um, he, he wasn't playing either. Oh, and I think right. uh, I think the Blues missed them. Saying that, moment of the match, how he did it, I have no idea. I did check afterwards with Sherpa Two Ryan Ryan Robbins, the media manager mm. at Bedford Blues. Now, bear in mind they were playing down the slope in second half, their the slope, favourite yeah. way. Coventry broke up the hill, uh, up their left wing, and he was, I think it's Will Griffiths, the guy's name, he was absolutely sailing up the, uh, up tanking it up the wing. Who should, out of nowhere, take him almost into the stands? Tom Lockett. He's been watching Courtney. Yeah, he was like an exocet. I mean, you could hear the crowd going, ooh, <laughs> as he hit him. Yeah. <laughs> De- definitely, definitely Courtney that, isn't it? Yeah, definitely well played, Tom Lockett. Absolutely. Um, but it was a subdued Blues performance at which mm. uh, Coventry took advantage of. Either team could have gone top, so Blues could have gone top, yeah. but it, today it's uh, Coventry who are top. Um, I think Coventry are a full-time team. Whereas, of course, Blues are part timers, so um, I don't know whether that made any difference. But anyway, it was it wasn't a 
festival of rugby. It was quite mm. dour. Um, but, you know, well done to the 5,000 that turned up. And, you know, RFU, yeah. have a word with yeah. yourselves because people really are enjoying championship rugby. They're coming out in droves to watch it. Yeah. Sell out crowds. Excellent. So, you know, up your pipe. And I'm hearing, because it's reported in the rugby paper, uh, at the at the request of Simon Halliday. Remember Simon Halliday? Yes, I do remember Simon yeah, Halliday. Yeah. 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 Uh, he, of course, is now running the championship. I think he's chairman of the something or yes. other. Uh, he, he basically wrote an article which said that uh, they've been threatened with mass relegation. I know. What mm-hmm. sort of... What sort of despot comes out with a suggestion like that? And how yeah. does he think that represents the rugby the rugby public? Are just unbelievable. 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 And, you know, as we said last week, stop trying to gerrymander three clubs back into existence yeah. to get them into a yeah. league. You know, look after the clubs that you've got that are loved and you can see yeah. people want to watch championship rugby. So pack it in. We're getting a bit controversial here, but I've, I've had enough of this. You know, and the PRL, you know, Simon Massey Taylor, you can have a word with yourself as well. Um, because, you know, the PRL does not own the championship. The championship are, you know, as they proved, they're producing a product that people love. And it's a very different game. Yeah. It's a very different, very different game, game. And it's a fun game to watch, although yesterday's was a bit down. But the previous game against Nottingham was fantastic. Yeah. So seriously, guys, uh, stop it. You know, appreciate the championship. Uh, think about growing and, the sport, not trying to revive and three what clubs brings, that no longer exist. And what the championship brings to the pre- to the Premiership as well. You know, you think of yes, players we've absolutely. had. Uh, think of our very own Sam Graham, number one, you know, who yeah. came up through the championship. Yeah. And now look at him. But without those years in the championship. Tom James. Tom James. Without without hmm. learning their craft at at, at a different level, the, the, yes, they've just got, it's it's so important for the for the later developers. So important, yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. So uh, you know they've really got the wrong end of the stick here. So you know PRL pack it in, um, and if you're paymasters yeah. of CBC, they can pack it in as well. So there you go. Um, Media Watch. Oh, Lord, I've had fun this weekend. I've had too much time on my hands reading papers yes. and listening to oh. podcasts. It's not good for your health. You'll you'll be needing this. <laughs> <laughs> so TNT tried to run a player of the season so far competition. Right. Who and was named it? four players. Instead of just opening it up, saying, who do you oh, think? Yeah. Getting all sorts of interesting ideas. Yeah. They named four players. And of those four, the obvious one was Ollie Lawrence. But seriously, guys. And actually, oh, they realised that. They yes. Up because when they did their review, they did their review yeah. show, they sort of mentioned it in passing and moved on quite quickly. Um, no. It was ridiculous. I mean, Ollie has had a great start to the season. But it was a ridiculous thing to do. Because um, also it was I'm comparing apples with pears, wasn't it? You know, so you've got Ollie Lawrence. Oh, and and we, we are not saying he's not been had a, a brilliant season, but they put Tom Pearson forward. Well, unless you're actually watching. Yeah. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Uh, yes. Yes. And and why TNT decided to name Vaca Tower as one of the players of the season. Have they actually been watching Bristol? Yeah. <laughs> I know he's been in my fantasy team scoring absolutely Did he zero. points. So, you know. And the week I take him out, he plays really well against Falcons. Anyway. There we go. So, it's, no, no. So, uh, uh, oh, 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 here we go. It, it oh. was this ear this time. <laughs> See, my ears. Am I am making a plea for middle aged middle aged men at this time of year stopping ch- trying to ask for changing the uh the sport. Oh. The latest being Stuart Barnes wanting to get rid of the scrums. But then it would be rugby league, surely. Rugby league. I <laughs> Yes. But, but then the whole list players. of them. My plea for 2024. Oh, my God. plea for the you know the end of the season. My plea my, for between now my, and the next world. My Cup. pathetic attempt my to be relevant. Back off and leave it alone. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. My pathetic attempt to be relevant in 2024 by Stuart Barnes, aged 59 yeah. and a quarter or whatever Age. he is. Yeah. No, he's older than me. Steady on. <laughs> Sorry, he's, he's slightly younger than me. That's... Uh... <laughs> Um, the only person that I think uh, we talked about this before is, is is Sam Wilberton's idea of British British and Irish league. Yes, yes. I think that's the only one that I where mm. you, it has some merit because you're not going to do it this season or next. It's going to take some time to do. And the reason I think is uh, I don't think the URC is it has floated anybody's boat for a while. The nonsense no. with the South African teams is not working. Thanks. No, not so. Really. Actually, I, I, it, it, I think that would actually work. Um, but beyond that, please, can we just stop with the, you know, yes. let's do this to the caterpillar and that to this, and stop kicking that. And no, let's just stop fiddling around with a blessed game and yeah. play it. <laughs> yes, yes. Because if you're if you're new to the sport and you're just learning, so this is what a scrum does, and that's how. And then to have somebody say, mm. "Well, we can get rid of." Well, if we can get rid of them, why are they so important? We can't get rid of them. We cannot get rid of them. They're terribly, terribly important. What would what yeah. would the fat lads do? Mm. Rugby is a game for all shapes and sizes. That's yes. the whole blessed point. Yeah. Although the fat lads don't half run around these days. They do, don't they? It's quite a different I, I, quite, quite, quite that, a different yeah, breed. No, no, I did I did quite a different I, Michael Alwyn has written a is it in the Guardian? Yeah, it's written an article about go back and watch rugby from the fifties and sixties. It's not the you know halcyon age that you think it was. No, it was mostly dross. Oh, it was um, terrible because they weren't as fit. No, and yeah. they all got to go back we to work on remember. Monday. They've all got to go back to work on Monday, and the grass was about fifteen foot That's long, right. and, and they got yeah, big leather no. boots, and That's... tackling was optional. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And usually involves taking somebody's head off or yes. scraping your boot over somebody's oh, body yeah, because, yeah. It, oh, well, they need a bit of shoe pie. Yeah, that, that shows enormous skill. Um, yes. Shouldn't have been there. Was no. Was... <laughs> shouldn't have been there. The old shouldn't have been there routine. Yeah. So I, yeah, I just, no. So I had some sympathy with the, you know, let's enjoy the sport for what it is now. Absolutely. Let's stop fiddling around with it and um, just enjoy it. Um. I have to say, well done to the rugby paper for uh, actually uh, publishing freely the articles about the championship. Uh, they've nailed their colours to the mask and are helping the championship um, talk about its travails with the RFU. Mm. I think the That's more good. that the media talk about how well yeah. um, the championship are doing and what they're doing to support the sport, the better. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, the championship, I'm not painting them as a bunch of saints. We talked about this, you know, they are they were wonderful. In the days when they did get a lot of money, they didn't necessarily spend it no. very wisely. And hopefully they've learned their lesson. Um, but they haven't got, they're having to get their revenue from themselves now. They're not getting much out of the RFU. Um, so, yeah, I seriously, I think um, the powers that be need to look but at I was going to say, not obviously, good. not good. If, if you're not into rugby, you won't be watching this pod. But anybody who knows anybody who wants an introduction to rugby and doesn't want to shell out a vast amount of money, go along to one of the championship games because the chances are you will see a, a decent brand of rugby. It'll be entertaining. There'll be friendly people around. You're close to the action as well. And I really like that yeah. at Bedford, that you're really close to the action. Um, and and yeah. That's, same at Hampton, same at Cov. Yeah, yeah, superb introduction to yeah. rugby and getting to know what's going on. There'll be plenty of people who will tell you what is going on. More probably than you would want, but it's a grand place to start. <laughs> yeah, no, so absolutely get along to your local rugby club, get along to a championship club. Um, there are plenty in the area uh, and you'll see some cracking rugby. And yeah. it's so tight at the top. Oh, yeah, no, it's please. tight in the in the Premiership, but it's really tight in the Championship, and Ealing are not having it all their own way. So yeah, good. Go and see some great good. rugby. Now, so. ref watch. I got a message from you on Sunday, Mrs. Saunders, saying I we don't... have to talk about. We have to talk about Carl. <laughs> we have to talk about Carl. Well, Carl. Oh, Carl. Carl, my friend. Yes. 
seriously. As somebody put in, and you know I've said it before, when he when he first became a referee, he was a real breath of fresh air and he seemed to understand the game and be empathetic and, and good. And now he isn't any of the above, I feel. Mr Carl Dixon, who, yeah. who was refereeing the Leicester Tigers versus Bath. Yes. Game. Yeah. Somebody put so somebody put on Twigger on Twigger on Twitter, <laughs> formerly Twitter now X Twigger. I quite like Twigger. Um, what is happening at Welford Road? And I replied with Carl Dixon is happening. And then somebody said, "Oh, what happened to Be Kind after Wayne Barnes re retired?" And I said, "I was being kind actually because all I said was <laughs> Carl Dixon is happening." And I'm not. I mean, I'm sure he's a warm, wonderful human being, and I, I bear the the man no ill will, well, a bit, um, really at all. But it's he's he's got to be. You've got to look at how he does his job. I'm not not judging him as a person, but as as a referee, get a grip, man. Listen to what you're being told yeah. by your TMO, and your your assistant. You, you haven't got eyes in the back of your head and you don't see it all. And really, if somebody's high tackled by the last defensive player as they're heading for the try line, it is a yellow card and a penalty try, mate. No, and to then go and give it the other end makes no sense. You make no sense. I think that's the problem. He makes no sense. Lovely bloke, I'm sure. And, and they're being kind, but he makes no sense. Yes. Yes, and, and too often controversies come out of games with that he's his, refereed. Yeah, yeah. and and uh, yeah, I, I watched it in horror because yeah. it some of it just yeah, it, it it's not empathetic. It's it's almost arrogant that he will this this. Uh, not, I'm not going to yes. look at it. Yeah, um, yeah, and yeah. It happened to us when we played, and uh, yeah, I think please. I could have. I can only presume he hadn't worked out. He hadn't worked out what by by siding with Tigers was actually going to do for us. I can I can't imagine that he'd worked <laughs> that one through. To be fair, but you know, so, he did side with Tigers. He just just, just um, it benefited Tigers because the way the because the yeah. way it fell. I it, it's I wonder just, if and it's not pleasant be... to watch because you're just bracing no. you're bracing yourself for the next you know next. moment. Um, uh, I wonder yeah. if Bath will complain Unlike. about him. I wonder if Bath will write and complain Who about knows. him. Other clubs have we, apparently. Yeah, I mean, we know, we know, we know. There's discussions afterwards, but yeah, yeah. Um, Matthew Carley, Matthew, now, not Matt. Mister Carley can be quite. Yeah. Stern. He can be quite Matthew. Quite Matthew, humorous. not Matt Carley. Yeah, he can be quite stern. Yeah, quite stern, and if. You Cross him sometimes, as Alex Waller was. Oh no, it was no, it was tea. It was tea. It, it was, was tea one of our who... captains. It was yeah, Tiani. I'm not to... talking to him anymore. I'm going to talk yeah. to you. <laughs> <laughs> so he can, be... and he did it the other week to somebody else in a. He did Investec Champions Cup game. It was it on the Leinster, the Leinster captain. Anyway, so we know he can be quite stern. He was having a blast on Saturday. Lots Even of Even when he got knocked lots over, of a bit of a chuckle. Even when he got knocked over, he got up, dusted himself down, had a laugh. He was watching yeah. the rerun run on the big screen. Yeah. Carries so, on. Well done, Mr. Carly, for enjoying yeah. yourself. Um, a short pair of hands, Mr. Carly. I don't necessarily already, always agree with what he's saying, but at least you don't feel like you're on your edge of your seat. What mistakes no. are going to make? Uh, no. no referee's perfect, but um, he does listen to his officials. He does. Which is what we want, because that's why yeah. they're art. Yeah. That's why they're there. Um, and well done to him. I just noticed he was smiling broadly, and I thought, well, that's not something Ooh. you see every day. So uh, no. well done for enjoying yourself, Mr. Carley. That is what it's all about. It's not yes. just, um, you know, meant to be misery. Unlike poor Andrew Jackson yesterday uh, at the Coventry Blues game, it looked like he was having a torrid time. Oh, dear. Um, he was actually the TMO on at the Tigers game. Ah, oh, right, so he's yes. he had a busy week. He'd had a busy weekend. I don't think he enjoyed himself. Certainly the Blues crowd didn't enjoy him. Um, but he did look like he was having a bit of a torrid time. It was, um, yeah, it was hard work for him. Uh, and a bit of inconsistency. 
between decisions for one team versus another team. And you can imagine that didn't go down too well. So he mm. didn't have a great afternoon out. Did it change the result? No, it didn't. No, it didn't. But again, it does add that sort of ugh, atmosphere to a game that you really don't need. So, yeah, not great. But in other news... I've just Contract checked who's... renewals. Now, while we've I've been on air... I've just going, checked. I go no, I've just bit? checked. I've just checked. Alex and? Coles. Alex Coles. Woo! <laughs> yeah. So... Oh, fantastic. That's Man of really history. Good. Man of letters. Yeah. And so uh, contract renewals. Well, wow. staying in the fold. Yes. Yeah, staying Robbie in Smith. the fold. Well, the first one we forgot last week, and we, we're really sorry that our yeah. Scottish correspondent, Robbie Smith, who I took a photograph, in fact, he appeared in the programme of him showing uh, Joe Booth how to play the bagpipes oh. in the pouring rain in Glasgow. <laughs> Yes. He didn't actually have a set of bagpipes with him. So oh, okay. Very good. Yes. Um, Miming the bad punk. Miming the bagpipes. So, best. Yeah, so uh, well done, Robbie. Uh, hopefully yeah. we'll get you fit again soon yes. and get you out there. Um, because, yeah. Yeah. He's, he's another one with energy, plenty of energy around the pitch. Yeah. yeah. Um, and was doing so well. So we need to get him back because having, yeah. you know, you need a lot of fit hookers because it's a you do. You know, attritional you do. position. Um, so well done, Robbie. And then Dingers. Dingers. Dingers, who, who is only 24. I'm not sure how, because he seems to have been around forever. So, but yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, he made his debut at that game we had at Twickenham in a deluge against Tigers. Lest Tigers, when it was that. for Rob Horn. And he, for Rob Horn, yes. Mm. Uh, and uh, it was so wet. It was horribly wet. <laughs> Yeah, he was horribly wet. We lost. I no, discovered I my boots leaked. He's wearing his Cambridge socks. Ah, uh, yes. Come a long way since then. Yes. Dingers is our defensive blanket. Um, uh, he is a awesome. man who absolutely loves defending, but loves scoring as well. Scores some absolute cracking tries over the years, um, and it's he has... great. It is a part of the leadership team at the club for what twenty four. Uh, yeah. Wonderful, wonderful player, and really pleased that he signed on. So, what well, great start this week? He must be loving the whole defensive thing because you know he used to say to you, didn't he? Oh, Claire, I wish everybody enjoyed defence as much as I did. Well, they do now, and you know they do, they do. And yeah, he was right all along, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and he's, you know, uh, he is. Yeah, he's a fabulous, fabulous player, wise beyond his years, and uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, they're. they're Tight knit bunch. So, yes. um, fantastic yes. news for all three gentlemen. Well done so far. Staying in the fold. So that's that's and more brilliant. to come this week. Oh, more so. To come. Oh, so exciting! What a time to be a saint! What a time to be a saint! We are oh, top of the league. Oh, sorry. Um, saint supporters club. Yes. Uh, no. Um, we we couldn't have our gazebo on Saturday because of the wind. So we we kind of had a. A Saturday off, but we will be back. Well, weather conditions allowing, hopefully, uh, at the next home game at Bayon. Um, we're not running. We're not running coaches to Exeter because it would have cost too much, and um, yeah, just would have cost too much, really. And I don't know, for probably about five people who take it up. Um, so what else? Oh. Uh, Maz, who's been organising the coaches for decades, has resigned, retired, and somebody mm -hmm. else is taking over. So I say a big thank you to Maz for all her hard work in wrangling coaches and supporters on and off them. And, and uh, yeah, there's just brilliant, a brilliant piece of work she's done for the past 30 odd years, I think. So thank you very much, Maz, and uh, good luck to Damon, who's taking over. We have got a supporters club committee meeting tonight to discuss our plans for the coming year. So watch this Brilliant. space. Watch this Brilliant. space. Well, fabulous news. Fabulous news. Um, well, we ought to talk about the next games. So the next game for that is actually a bit of a lull for some of the teams. Um, Loughborough are off to Gloucester. That's mm. going to be a big game. It's going to be a big one. Uh, yeah, against the champions. So good yeah. luck to them. And we're off to 
Exeter. Exeter. Exeter, yes. I'm, I asked on Twitter, anyone got any guy ropes? I will be reusing them, I think, on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's always breezy at Sandy Park and it's always bitterly cold at this yeah. time of year. Um, and uh, But we're further west, which means we get more light because Sunday is oh, yes. down a bit later. So there's some sort of, always an upside. Um, yeah, we're doing it as a day. Dr. Jones and I are doing it as a day trip. We're not going to stay Ooh. down there. So no. it's a, a dart down there, do the game, and then hurtle back. Um, and it is the top two. Who'd have predicted that first match of the new year would be the top, the top two, two playing each other and it's Saints at Exeter? Um, should be an absolute belter of a game. And, if anybody uh, oh. can do it, we can. Anybody can do it. We can uh, on our day. We and our days are many at the uh, minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We can. We can certainly put one over people. And um, as several teams have discovered, so yeah, should be a huge, huge game. Um, fascinating. Who we're going to put out? Yeah, yeah. Who, who is who, who's the pick going to be? Um, because we're now we've now got choices to make. You know, choices at lock. Yeah, choices yeah. at centre, um, wingers. Um, yeah, they've all got engineering. <laughs> oh, awesome. at the minute. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> talking of people with engineering, shout out to our favourite wheelchair rugby player who is still in Milton Keynes Hospital, and uh, yeah, just getting a bit fed up now. So, chin up. Come on, Phil. Chin up. Keep keep going. You can do this. We're, come on, we're gonna we're gonna get you on the pod as soon as you and Teddy your dog yeah uh, as soon as possible we want you on the pod to talk all things wheelchair rugby and i've got um, the hint about chocolate cake it's his favorite cake apparently chocolate cake. ah chocolate cake oh he's put a he bit off- in very he good off- he offered it with no that's what <laughs> he been watching he the knows pod. you're going to take up the baton though doesn't he yeah he does um, it is <laughs> yeah so sh- you know we're thinking of you phil yeah um keep going you'll get there uh, you had a pretty rough 2023, and we'll get you back out in your wheelchair, uh, knocking people over. He does like to run into people. Well, they all do, actually. Yeah, it's yeah. Part of the sport. So, um, so we'll, we, we need to get you back up and running, and uh, we'll see you soon, and we'll get you on the pod so you can tell us all about your wonderful sport. Yes. Because it is a wonderful, wonderful um, sport, which I love taking photos of. Um, so... Yes, a good start to 2024, Mrs Saunders. Yes. yes, very good. Well, good end to 2023. Good start to 20... Good well, yeah. Uh, we will just... Whew, more to come. More highs and lows. More blood more pressure. More highs and lows. Yes. I mean, uh, I have don't... you got the machine ready? Is it ready? Machine's ready. But I do... Th- I, I suspect the uh, commercial team are, even as we speak, tapping up every blood pressure monitoring... <laughs> Blood pressure <laughs> tablet producing company to sponsor us, sponsored by Ramapril. Yeah, it's a uh, mm. blessing. But I did feel calmer, I have to say, on Saturday because I'm thinking, well, no, we can do this. I don't, I don't panic when they go behind, and because they're not panicking. And yeah, yeah, uh, it's, uh, yeah they they are playing a canny game of rugby at the minute, and uh, fair dues to them. Uh, interestingly, Bayon. Bayon. Bayon beat Racing over the Ooh. weekend. Ooh. Again, mm. you know, the media's love child. Yeah. At, you know, yeah. Arundel and Kilosi and Co. Yeah. Oh. So, interesting. Yeah, very interesting. And of course, Extra have got to go to Bayon. We, oh. on the other hand, are going to Limerick. Yeah. So our group could get very interesting. Very tasty. Um, very tasty indeed. Uh, where, where, whereas Bayon are coming to us in a couple of weeks. I have now got my calendar in my head sorted out. You've got after. it right now. So we've got Exeter Just on a, Saturday, Bayon the weekend. Then, then, then it's Bayon and then it's Newcastle. Uh, no, it's not. It's Limerick. It's, not it's Newcastle. Newcastle. It's, Lim- it's Limerick. It yeah. <laughs> it's Limerick. Limerick first. Limerick. Yeah. Right. So that's episode eight of the Ladies episode Want eight. Pod. Have a great week, everybody. Yes, thank you for watching and see you. Come and say, if you haven't come and said hello to us, do come and say hello. I yes, will it's lovely when you do. Thank you to everybody who really has. Nice. We're, we're, we're reminded. Uh, yeah. Is, I've had a number of people at both the Bedford game and the uh, 
Saints game come up saying we love the pod as you have yeah. Liz so uh, yeah it's yeah, great no, we, we, we appreciate the feedback um, and if there are any subjects you want us to talk about you might yeah, let's just write it in the thingies down in there, there or yeah. just tell us and um, yeah, just, we'd love to have a we'll try and remember try and remember <laughs> yes. anyway okay. see you well all well done everybody thank you have so much bye bye